Uh, welcome, everybody, to Free Will, Science, and Religion. Uh, I'm here with George Ortega and Jamie. How are you guys today? I'm feeling fine today. I'm good, thanks. That, I mean, that's I, should say, I should say, how, what has the universe compelled you to feel today? You, the universe <laughs> is compelling you to both feel okay today, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's glad, a good point there. The universe is allowing you to feel well today. Anyway, let's start the topic with the definition clearly, and we'll, then we'll talk about why it's important that the world and Main Street uh, world gets the idea that we are leading the world to a new consciousness, and we are leading a revolution of consciousness. So we want to clearly define, I guess I'll have Jamie go first. Jamie, can you please define what the term free will means? Um, the free will means um, people um, could have acted to, or could have um, done or decided to do otherwise than what they've already done. Very good. I like that definition. George, what's your definition? Yeah, free will is like, you know, I think um, a good way to see it is what it's not. In other words, like a puppet doesn't have any free will. What a puppet or a, um, a mannequin does or a robot, it's not up to them in any sense. So, like, free will is like the opposite of that. And, you know, basically what we're saying is we're simply like robots or computers or puppets. Okay. And I'm going to go with the definition today. If we had a free will... Who amongst us would be depressed, ang angry, and why wouldn't we always be a perfect... In other words, if we had free will, we would always act as a perfect angel and do everything perfect and never do anything wrong. So yes. clearly that's a refutation for why we do not have free will. Uh, Excellent. George, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. So, George, why do you think, uh, you know, why do you think, you know, this show is so important and why can't some, a lot of people, most people, how come they just can't get it? All right. Why it's important. I mean, you have to understand our world is completely deluded about the fundamental nature of human behavior. You know, to think that things are up to us, that a lot is up to us, that, that we have a free will and we can decide whatever we want to when the reality is that we can't. I mean, that's major. That's major. And uh, what was the second part of your question? Uh, why do you think people can't get it? Right. Oh, yeah. Um, I think a few reasons. One is like we have this ego. People want to feel that what they do is up to them. They want to feel significant in that way. You know, the, the prospect of being uh, a puppet or a robot, whatever, doesn't sound appealing to some people. Um, I think some people are, are afraid that, like, you know, they, they get why we don't have free will, but they can't accept it because uh, they're afraid that, like, if they accept it, the world's going to, the civilization's going to collapse. So, and Jamie, Jamie, why do you think most people can't get it? Um, well, there's all different reasons. Well, the first would have to be because of religious indoctrination, because some people grew up in families where they were told where God gave them free will. And um, it's very hard to let go of all uh, old traditions and old beliefs, um, you know. Okay. Listen, uh, I, I know you guys probably know, I mean, Jamie, you know about the pleasure principle or the hedonic imperative. Yes. Well, yeah. So I want to ask a little different question today since, uh, you know, so I'm doing this and you're doing this and George is doing this because of our own hedonic imperative, our pleasure principle, which is, to you know, bring this uh, new consciousness into the public domain and do the podcast. Now, here I am on a Saturday afternoon at 2.30, and I'm kind of wondering, I was telling a little bit about George before we started, how do you think, I, I could have George answer this too, but how do you think we could best monetize this? Because, frankly, I don't want to sit here every Saturday, you know, just talk, you know, I, I, maybe I have a superiority complex, which is part of my hedonic. It makes me feel very good to talk about this thing because uh, we, we get it and very few people don't. So in a way, we're intellectually superior. But Jamie, can you shed any light on how we can actually make maybe some money off of this? Um, well, outside, yep. of ri outside of writing books like um, George Ortega and Trick Slattery does, um, I'm not really sure. I mean, the media is not going to give you much attention on this, are they? Well, that's my next point. Why is it that, you know, we're talking about why people don't get it. I was uh, segueing into that. I was, you know, trying to be a good host. and seg You know, I think people don't get it is because there's no movie. 
There's a you know there's no media. There's just you, me, and uh, Chandler and Trick. And I don't know if you've written a book yet, Jamie, but we have our, all our self-published books. Hmm. And I don't really think they sell very well, to be honest with you. I, my, my royalty check is very low, maybe mm-hmm. $20 a month if, if I'm lucky. Yeah. And uh, so the people don't get it is because my question is really, why is there no media supporting this other than us? Uh, because, too, because too many... Too many people um, still believe in this doctrine of um, the free will belief, don't they? I mean, if enough if, if enough people got it, if enough people understood it, then they'll be more interested to, you know, read into what you're saying, you know, because you you've got your um, blogs on YouTube, like where you do this, um, you know, show you and George Ortega, you discuss um, why people don't have a free will um, out in public, and YouTube is free, you know, people anyone can access it. As long as they have the internet connection, so you know. But I'm in a little bit of a conundrum because George has told me many times on and off the record that this is quote the biggest thing ever, and he says it all the time. He can quote John Searle in a second. Mm-hmm. Yet, if it's the biggest thing ever, it would be a million times bigger than when the Beatles came to America. You know, that would be the biggest thing. You know, sold out stadiums. Mm-hmm. People would be following me home with bodyguard. That's Nick. You know, right now I'm seeing. Yeah. A big discrepancy between the biggest thing ever and the five to ten people doing this podcast let me, with a very limited. Let me let me take a uh, a shot at this, okay? And there's no movie about the subject. All right, Go ahead. yeah. Let me basically like use the analogy of cell phones, okay? Before cell phones, smartphones, you know, like. Most people just wouldn't, you know, if you'd ask them if they wanted, most people would say, no, I don't need it, I don't want it, whatever. You know, so like, this thing with free will, once people understand how significant it is, not just to the world in general, but to their lives, you know, to how they get along with their family and friends and stuff, then they're going to become interested. So like, yeah, in terms of like getting them interested, I think the books... Our, our, our TV shows, this podcast, this is the first introductory step. But in terms of like both monetizing this, making money, and just like reaching yeah. a much, much wider audience, I think the way to go is a, a theatrical release documentary. You know, a documentary that like, like an inconvenient, inconvenient truth, like what the, bleep, the, what the bleep do we know? You know, something that will reach, you know, an inconvenient truth made about 50 million 40 million dollars at the bo- no 50 million at the box office like you know here in the United States and across the world uh what the bleep do we know made about 15 million so basically yeah if we if we were to get a movie made not only would um everyone like really really understand what this is all about and why it matters but yeah we'd make a lot of money doing it and what would you call the name? What would the name of the movie be? Um, I'm not going to say that because I'm actually working on, on you know, like with someone wow. and, and I've got a good name. But but basically the name okay. that we're, we're thinking of, it reflects the fact that 80 to 90 percent of Americans are believe in a, sp- a higher power, you know, in God or a higher power. So I think we, we need to address that population. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure this out. So, uh, you know, we want to we want to get the podcast audience that, that, that listens to this basically by word of mouth to tell their friends and family to keep listening to us so we can spread the word, I guess, grassroots or underground in the meantime, because it's going to be hard for me to do these podcasts all the time if I'm not getting anywhere. You know, if I just feel like. I mean, it's psychologically very pleasing. Don't get me wrong that I, you know, I'm talking to everybody who gets it because I feel you know, we're like the super intelligent intelligentsia of our day. But if it's not going to go anywhere, you know, I'm going to burn out. So really, you know, we should just tell our audience that if you don't believe in free will, please tell someone to watch the next or listen to you know, watch our shows on MNN or whatever. Or listen to the next podcast with Trick and Jamie and all these guys. And then the next one. I hear you. Because, because uh, we're on a planet here, and I know you, uh, George can talk about global climate change, but I'm going to talk about, number one, how honesty is the best policy, that we should all be living in the truth. Whether or not it's better or worse is debatable, but I think it's better. But even if it weren't better, it's the truth. And I don't see how things could be any worse than things are now with 
uh, terrorists beheading people on YouTube. So we've given the free will model thousands of years to to have a go at it, and it's clearly not working. So it's time for the truth to you know come through and make you know the world a better place. Now, either of you can you talk about how the world would actually be better once everybody gets it, um, or the vast majority of people get it. Well, I think it could be better because people would understand how the brain works more. I mean, they would understand the brain as a computer rather mm -hmm. than just some supernatural um, choice-making machine, you know. I mean, it doesn't make free choices. It makes choices uh, based on, you know, prior cause, doesn't it? So um, if people understood that, then they'll be more inclined to, um, you know, address the causes of why people will become violent or lazy or whatever it is, you know. But what do you say to the person to you who says that's very depressing to hear that I'm a computer, I'm a puppet, I'm a robot, and I have no control over my life? That that what do you say to that audience that's turned off by that immediately? They might say this is the most depressing podcast I've ever listened to. I want to turn on mindless television and eat cake and you know go out with my girlfriend because it's more pleasurable. Well, obviously we're going to have to find a way to make it interesting for them because uh, you know they they still have it um, ingrained into them, that, um, you know, subconsciously that we're just we've got free choices, you know, and, and they don't understand the truth yet because if they did, not, did understand the truth, then I, they wouldn't see it as depressing. No, Jamie, I've got one emotion. one approach that I think may work. In other words, like people find it depressing because, like you know. We're no longer doing things because we want to, right? And that's what they... Now, yeah, again, right. remember that 80, 90% of people believe in God or a higher power. So, like, I think the message to them is, like, well, yes, we're not doing what we as people want to. We're doing what God wants us to do. So I think, you know, like, if, if we really thought about it, you know, if we went through our days with the recognition that, oh, no, you know, I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm doing what God wants me to do, what God wills. I think for a lot of people, that, that'll that actually give us more dignity. We're not just a person, you know, just doing our, our, our will as just a, a small person on, on this huge planet. We're doing the, the, the will of the creator of everything and all. I, I think that would resonate. Yeah, um, I mean, to the relig religious type, you could um, put it that way to him. You could just say, well, we're doing the will of God, I suppose, but... I mean, yeah, but that's, but that's already used by terrorists who blow up the World Trade Center and say <laughs> Allah is great. They think everything's God's will, and they're using it as an excuse. So I'm a little worried about telling everybody that everything is God's will because they're going to use it. Well, I, you know, God told yeah, me to Yeah, but do Nick, this. Nick, no, but that's like saying, well, the terrorists are saying that they believe in God, so we shouldn't believe in God. Or, or you know, or, or like, or like, you know. No, 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 it'll become a battle of who's saying God told me to blow up your country. Well, God told me to blow up your country. It's gonna, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a holy war. Of whose God is greater? Well, naturally, that you know, like part of the reason a lot of people don't want to get this is they're afraid that people are gonna say, well, you know, it's not, you know, it's not up to me. You can't blame me. Right. So naturally, we're gonna have to say, fine, listen, like if you, you know, if you think that God is telling you to do things, maybe that the answer is that like you're not listening well enough. That's not really God. That's Satan or whatever, you know. So, like, you know, just because somebody says it's God making them do that doesn't mean that it's actually, well, I mean, it, it is in a sense, but, but you know, like, I, I, I think we have to, um, we can't allow that, you know, just because terrorists, they, because, like, you know. Well, George, I, do, wait, I just want to say I do agree with you because if there's no free will, obviously everything's the will of God or the universe. So that's correct. So that would be a good name of a movie, like the God's will or the universe's will. The problem is. I'm afraid everyone's going to start walking around saying, well, God told me to steal your wallet or God told me to murder my, you know, everything is clearly, you know, when, when everyone gets it, there's no free will. Obviously, it's God's will or the universe's will. But that leaves us with a predicament of, of everyone just telling everyone it's God's will. So I don't know how. Well, Jamie, how, Jamie, know, how, how would you address that? How would you, you know, what do you think? Like, for example, let's say tomorrow everybody got that nobody has a free will. How would how do you think people would respond, and how do you think society would respond to people saying, "Well, you know, you can't really blame me because it's not my will." It's God's will. You'll say it's God's will. Well, we've got two we've got two uh, possibilities here. One is that people won't be, um, you know, as um, you know, they won't have a blaming attitude where they say, "Oh, you should have done this, you should have done that." Um, 
they'll try and address the matters in a lot in a lot more of a civil way. Then you've got the other half, which will just use the no free will thing as an excuse to do bad things, or, and then they'll just turn around and say, um, you know, I don't have a free will, so don't blame me. You know, and we can't have that. We can't have people making excuses for doing bad. You know. Exactly. Well, we already have terrorists saying it's God's will. We already have that problem. And e even today in the law, in the like, there used to be this like quote unquote insanity defense that like if you could you know claim some kind of like emotional illness or something, you could get off you know without. But but if if you realize today, especially in the United States, our prisons and jails are filled with the the mentally ill. So in other words, like if if, if we in our world don't allow the mentally ill to get away with doing stuff, could, when everybody completely understands that mental illness isn't up to anyone, then I think that we can use that same principle of applying it to like, well, it's it's not my will. It's you know. I, I, what, I wasn't in control of it because I don't have a free will. So I, I think, you know, again, we, we, we're not going to allow people to just do what they want. And I think we have a precedent, you know, that's established today already in, to, that should really make people uh, feel comfortable about that. Okay, but your premise, okay, this all started with me telling, is it, is it Jamie? Is that Jamie, Jamie Soden. Jamie, right? Yeah. We were, I, my question was, uh, this topic can be very depressing, and that's why we don't have an audience, because nobody uh, wants to hear something as unpleasurable as their life is not up to them, and they're not in control, so they'll turn us right off and tune us out. But then George said, quote, you know, quote, it's going to be more noble because everybody's going to be doing God's will, which, you know, it's like if you have a direct phone line to God and God tells you to do something, you do it so you feel a little bit more no noble. I know you've used the uh, metaphor of Barack Obama, but it's really a uh, God that, will, you know, say it's 30 years from now and everyone gets it. It's really the universe's will or God's will. So we all agree if it's not a free will, it's a God's will. But the problem is everyone will no longer be depressed because it's a very noble thing we're doing. But now we have the new problem of everyone claiming. So, you know, you're solving one problem, which is no one's really thinking it's depressing because they're all. Nick, are you still there? Because you, you just cut out. I can't hear you. Nick, Nick yeah, we got your point. Hello? We got your point. Um, Jamie, how, what? Where's Jamie? I don't know. Is Jamie there? All right, yeah, so what, how there. would you respond? Now, you cut out for a while, Nick, but you're back. So, Jamie, how would you respond to what Nick was saying? Um, well, how would I respond to what Nick was saying about, um, you know, people... Um, still believe in God and all that stuff. We still have this problem where they're like highly religious. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure to tell you the truth. I mean, I'd I'd much rather ask you that question because um, you'd seem to explain these. All right. Well, here's the thing. Like, for example, like with with evolution, Darwin proposed it in the 1860s, and here it is over 150 years, you know, past that, and and 50 percent of Americans prefer to believe in creationism than in evolution so like so this these religions beliefs are very powerful so like basically what we have to do is give people give the world sufficient incentive to understand that this belief in free will is not just wrong it's extremely harmful and what I'm talking about is like climate change denial you know denial is something we do when somebody accuses us of something that we consider like is is against you know doesn't conform to what we believe about ourselves you know if somebody tells us like we're a really bad person we're doing really horrible things and we do and we believe we're not a horrible person we're a good person then we're going to go into denial and this is kind of like an unconscious mechanism that we do it's it's a, it's a defense mechanism so what happens is like these these scientists are telling people listen because of what you're doing and what your friends are doing what your family's doing we might actually be destroying civilization. In 100 years, we might be reduced from, you know, uh, 9 billion in 2050 to less than 1 billion people, and, and society and civilization might collapse. That's what people are hearing, and when they hear that, I mean, what, what, what more of a, of a horrible indictment could, can you think of? You know, and so naturally people are saying to themselves, well, no, I'm a good person. My friends are good people. My family is good people. We couldn't be doing that. So it can't be real. So climate change can't be real. So, again. Yeah, but you have to tell them is, is that it's not really fundamentally well, their fault. It's, um, 
It's just something that they were compelled to do. Jamie, like exactly. That's what I'm getting to. In other words, like to feel guilty about that kind of indictment and then to like use the defense mechanism of denial, you have to first believe that you have a free will. If you understood that you don't have a free will, nobody has a free will, all of a sudden the scientists are telling you the same thing and you're saying, well... Yeah, it's, we, we need to do something, but you wouldn't be feeling responsible, you wouldn't be feeling guilty, and then you wouldn't be going into denial. So that, that I think that's, you know, it gives yeah. it a lot of relevance. At the same, yeah, and at the same time, you want to be proactive in, you know, addressing horrible matters. I mean, um, climate change is just uh, one of them. The other is the educational system. I mean, you have to tell kids um, that, you know, free will is just dogma you know nonsense it doesn't make sense in in a scientific perspective or from a logical logical perspective you know what i mean both those things you know? absolutely so nick how's that sound uh well first of all i want to say i do understand why the vast majority of people don't want to hear our message because until you really get it it is initially very upsetting and depressing to think that your life is predetermined and that you have no control over the outcome of anything. Now, what you keep saying is, well, the noble view is everything is God's will. So that leads me to think, you know, then we just have to say, well, even though everything is God's will, we still have to condition people to behave so they do not harm, you know, other people. So we, like what you were saying once before about operant classical conditioning and also, we could also say what Jamie said is you're not fundamentally responsible, but you're pragmatically responsible. So it may have been God's will or compelled by the entirety of the universe that you blew up that building, but you're still uh, accountable, meaning you have to answer for it. You're the representative of this problem, and we're going to have to send you to jail. You know, we have to remove you from society. Yeah, yeah. we have to send them. Um the troublemakers to jail, like, they're, um, you know, causing problems for other people. And they're not, like, fundamentally to blame in any deeper sense, like you see. But at the same time, we need to protect the public. So that's why we have jails. That's why we have to rehabilitate them and, you know, recondition them so they won't reoffend. Right, and here... So what might happen is the, 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 the accused person would have to go in front of a judge, just like we do now, and he would say... Uh -huh. I listened to George's podcast and Jamie and Nick, and they convinced me there's no free will, so everything's God's will. And then the judge could say, well, I listened to Jamie, Nick, and George, and Trick also, and God's will is also for you to go yeah, to but jail. There's more to it than that, Nick, because under the current system, the judge is thinking of that person as evil. He's a criminal. He's a bad person. You know, He's a monster, whatever it is. And the public is also thinking of a right. criminal like that. Think about it. When, when, when everybody's thinking about these people in that way, chances are a lot of these criminals are going to be thinking about themselves in that same way also. Now, here's the problem. So, like, if they have that self-identification as a bad person, somebody who commits crimes, it's going to be much harder to, for them to rehabilitate. In other words, like, if we were to tell them what happens is, like, when, when everybody gets a no has a free will, the judge will say, and we will say to this criminal, listen, we feel really bad that we have to do this. You know, if, if don't blame yourself because, like, we human beings are neither good or bad. We just, like, we, we just do what the universe tells us. So, like, and, and, and we, we might actually even want to see ourselves as good. So, like, basically, first of all, we treat them with more respect. We, we get them to not identify with their being a bad person to the extent we do that, then when they're in, in jail or prison or something, they're not going to be seeing themselves as that kind of person, so it'll be much more likely that they'll they'll rehabilitate. They, there, there'll be much less recidivism because, again, they won't have that self-identification. And the other thing, it's a matter of respect. You know, they, they won't feel disrespected by the world. They won't be feel disrespected by judges and by the police and by, by society. So, you know, so they'll maintain their dignity, which I think will help them to, to, con to do the right thing more often. Yeah, it makes sense what you're saying in a way, because we don't say like little kids are, you know, um, evil or uh, scum uh, for, you know, doing things wrong. Um, we, say to, we say to them, please don't do this because this is not appropriate. You shouldn't be doing this. And, uh, you, you know, you just discipline them. You don't like um, abuse them. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so do you really think the answer to someone becoming depressed by our news that there's no free will, or you're still maintaining 
that to say that everything is God's will. You think that sells better? Well, that's again, that's one one part of, of the answer. Another part is like to tell them that like it, it leads to denial and like denial of climate change. Another th approach is the commonsensical everyday approach that like we we sometimes we with our family and our friends we get into arguments and disagreements and to the extent that we attribute free will to other people and they attribute to us not only are we dealing with the difference of opinion we're also dealing with the blaming so this free will belief really creates a second condition of aggression and hostility between people when they have differences so like, to the extent we overcome it people are going to get along a lot a lot better so if someone's arguing in the future, you want them to say to each other, why is God willing us exactly. to Exactly. Instead of like saying, why are you doing this horrible thing? You know, both of them would be saying, oh my God, why is God, you know, making you do that? So they'd be on the same side, you know, trying to figure out why what happened was happening. Yeah. We don't have to be a uh, deist or um, a pantheist to understand this. Um, there's like agnostics and atheists who understand this, like myself. Um, I just think of it as the universe compelling like people to do evil things, but they're not um, spiritually evil or they don't have an evil soul, you know. Right. When I say God, I mean the universe. So it might be a better sell to say it's the universe's will. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. So I'm just trying to figure out, so you do both agree that most people are turned off by this message because they feel it's depressing to not be in control of their own life. Do you, you do agree with that, right, Prem mm -hmm. with that premise? So we're up against Yeah, that. but it, again, again, 50% yeah. of, of Americans at least have become comfortable with the idea that we descended from, from ape-like creatures, that, you know, our ancestors. So, yeah. like, you know, 50% of us are, are comfortable with that. So I think 50... Yeah, that's yeah, true. When I first heard when I first heard that we evolved from rodents and snakes or whatever you told me, I, I was very turned off by it, you know, with the whole. Uh, but now I'm getting, you know, I'm beginning. I, I had a block because it was so unappetizing to my mental well-being and psychology. But now I got, I'm getting more used to it. So I'm, you know, I'm obviously I believe in evolution, but it's hard for me to believe that we came from like, you know, rodents. Exactly, and just. Just as you became, you know, comfortable with that, people are going to become comfortable with this. And again, like, there, it's not just understanding the truth. Like you said before, truth matters. This is, like, important that we get this right. But once they see the benefits of not just blaming, you know, like, they won't blame others, but they won't blame themselves. We do stuff that's wrong all the time, and we blame ourselves. When we blame ourselves, we want to punish ourselves. So we, we endure a lot of unnecessary suffering because of this belief in free will. And like you said before about, like you said before about the cell phones, when the cell phones first came on the scene, you know people didn't really want to use them. We might just be, you know, like you always say, way ahead of. We're at the very beginning of this, so it's kind of like a new technology or a new conscious. Don't really know what to do with it, how to work it. So it's just a question of timing that we're right at the beginning. So people don't really know what to do with this new knowledge. So whoever's listening to this. You know, we don't want you to be turned off. We want you to tell other people that we are telling you something that's very important. Honesty is the best policy. You're probably uncomfortable because it's new, just like the cell phone. And over time, you'll learn to become be more comfortable with it. That sounds excellent. Yeah, people are afraid of, like, you know, saying new to them. It's uh, normal psychology, I guess. Um, but I think a lot of this is uh, fear-based as well because people are afraid that if we don't, hold, um, if we don't believe in free will then we won't hold people accountable for wrongdoing. And that's false. You know, that's just a false doctrine. You know? You're right. Guys, we've got about a minute left. Okay, but the people doing wrongdoing will then say it's the universe's will, but they still have to be held accountable. That's the trick. Yeah, we have to stop them, yeah, still, because it's still hurting other people. We, we can't allow that. Right, and so... All right, so we have a minute left. So whoever's listening to this, we want you to know to tell your friends and family that they should stop living in the illusion of free will, and that the truth is for the betterment of mankind and for yourself. And I just want to do a commercial for our podcast. We've got we've got yeah. about 10 or 11 co-hosts so far. We're going to be alternating, you know, co-hosting shows with different people. And if you want to help us spread this message about the world, you know, to the world that nobody has a free will, contact us. You can co-host with us. Do one or two podcasts a month. Minimal commitment. Okay, and Jamie, your last words? Um, my last words is, well, people get evolution, so uh, 
um, people should be able to understand that, that we don't have a free will because if you think about it, as, as Richard Dawkins would say it, evolution itself disproves free will, you know, because of cause and effect, natural selection. You know. And in fact, we are talking about evolution. We're not talking about evolution of a physical species or a trait. We're talking about evolution of consciousness. That's, of course. So everything, if everything evolves, why not consciousness? All right, guys, we're out of time. Th thanks, everybody. Bye.